What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fun with Dumb. Today we have very special guests, um, friends of ours, uh, stirring up the podcast universe, um, Asian American rock stars of the current generation. <laughs> I'm giving a hell of a fucking. I, know, <laughs> we, I really like that good. one. That was kind of fire. I'm using that, that for good. myself from now on. Four <laughs> missing brain cells. Um, that's what the bio reads. Uh, you, right. you actually added the missing part. We have four your four brain favorite cells. brain cells. Four, four of your favorite brain cells. We got Under the Influence. The squad is here. We got Wu Tak. That's me. Vit Trap. We got Esther and Jeremy. Wow. Hello, Hello, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Hello. Hello. Was that all said correctly? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. You got you. You said uh, his name right yeah, too. Yeah. People fuck yeah. my name up a lot. I, I, I thought so. So I was like, I gotta get that right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get get right through it. Vit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Something I want to say yes. is because you guys probably heard me coughing, but I'm over the sickness, so don't be scared. You're toward the end. I'm done. Like I just have this lingering cough. Okay. <laughs> you know, just, sick I don't want hundred okay. days out of the year. So, yeah, so I was, I'm wanna... a lot more worried now. I didn't even give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, oh my god. Okay. No, no, I just well, yeah. never mind. <laughs> and I'm here with my co-host Steffi Bay. Hey, what's up, guys? We love Steffi. Yeah. Hello. Yes, we do. Um, I, I thank you guys for coming on the show. Of course. Thank you for having us. I love you guys, man. You guys are really funny. You guys are constantly on my feet. Three, t- three, four times a day. You can't try to be it, yeah. unsolicited, just <laughs> popping up. It's like wild. We should start talking about him unexpectedly. <laughs> yeah, just little. Wait, you come up uh, quite often, actually. When they say like, "What's your favorite episode?" We always say when you guys came on. Yeah. I, wow. yeah. I get jealous because I know I'm not popping up as much as you guys are popping up. So, I mean, um, but you, your, you have your to guys, hustle. Your your guys's episode on our page is one of the best. Like it's. I loved yeah. your fans, by the way, because yeah. like I think you put up some of our videos from our. Remember the controversy of like the Korea me going to the Brazilian. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the Brazilian <laughs> side of the sport. She, she loved and that. Everyone hated me on yes, that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, they were like, you're a zen- yeah. xenophile. And, <laughs> xenophile. Yeah, I, was a xenophile. I think that's what it said. I was like, like no, 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 I'm not. Xenophobic. And then I looked it I up. I was like, what the fuck is that? No. <laughs> that, xenophile sounds sketch. Xenophile? It's like pedophile, yeah. xenophile. Like, <laughs> I knew shit. that shit was bad from yeah. the jump, xenophile. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but we loved being on your pod. It was, yeah, it was, was a lot fun. of fun. Um, Y'all are hella organized compared to our pod. Like, remember <laughs> no, that? we're not. They had like a podcast. We I are, mean, not you. Yeah, wait, wait. One day or so, their shit is way more Okay, organized. when we went to their, they had an iPad full of like literally a hundred questions. <laughs> yeah. They were barely like, it was It was like, it was just like questions, question after question. It was like, and then when a topic came up that we were all interested in, we would be talking. Mm-hmm. While us, we're just like. You know oh. where all my questions are? Right <laughs> Smart. Terabytes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, what's the first we one? Thought of- <laughs> can, yeah. can, I, can I say, is the organized one Jeremy? Is that, I feel like, the wild guess. I'm not shit throwing you guys under the wow. bus. No, what, saw, what about Vit doesn't oh, look organized? But I will say, I saw the last episode and you guys had questions ready for them. No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's because, uh, well, that's like a special episode because of uh, we were like exposing them to the public, basically. Right, right. Is that, but you guys prepare yeah. those? Or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, right. the organization comes from me and him. Yeah. We split up the organizational I duties. See. And then these two uh, no. are, are getting better. Whoa, whoa, I come up with the most questions. She does. Let's be real. Okay, okay. Yeah. but I'm talking about the project management and yeah, everything yeah. else to move the entire exactly. operation. It's me. And she him. does. She does bring questions. Vit just shows up. He's just happy to be there. Oh, yeah. But the vibes energy guy. is needed. I'm know? the terrible. I'm, I'm the, the vibe guy. Yeah, exactly. yeah. The vibes. Yeah, guy. He provides the vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the vibes I, do come. Right? I shine in the moment. <laughs> I, I see the vibes. I feel. I've it. told them this too. It's like my I, my brain just doesn't work that way. That's that's what you need. You just need somebody. Like I, we have vibe people too. You know, we have vibe people on standby. <laughs> <laughs> who's, a, who's a vibe person? It's like I walk out, come once, back with like a wig on. And I'm like, oh, hey, there it is. <laughs> no, once in a while, I feel like Rec is a vibe guy. You All know right, what I right, mean? Right. Andrea is a vibe girl. You yeah, know what I mean? Andrea yeah. Jen? Yeah, yeah. She, mm-hmm. she, has, she has vibes. Um, <laughs> I got to say, first of all, congrats on you guys on going public. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I was like, thing. whoa. <laughs> no yeah. ring. No ring. <laughs> ah. uh, one day, one day. How, yeah. How did that? start where, where when did you guys first find out you guys even like 
like this is a product other. of work uh, workplace sexual harassment. What exactly? <laughs> Who was <laughs> harassing? Esther, 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 Esther was harassing Jeremy. Esther was harassing. Who would you even report that to, though? You know? <laughs> he had Our, HR. He quit. Yeah, yeah he quit he on us. He said this is too much stress for me to handle. <laughs> let, let me Wait. take one step back though yeah. uh, with you because I saw a little bit of uh, how that how it all happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but when you f- first felt that about Jeremy, mm-hmm. like what was it? Was it like the entrepreneurial spirit? Well, no, what? I didn't care about that. You didn't, I didn't give a fuck about that. No, when I first first met him i was like this guy's a nerd this guy's a geek yeah but yeah. girls love nerd right? i could tell you're like yeah. the good good guy or the good boy out of the group oh, he's like he's a nice, he's a nice oh, guy no, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would agree we don't even have to argue that <laughs> I feel don't like even make that face look. don't even don't you even, don't even no. he tried to pretend like yeah. i'm not pretending <laughs> I'm so esther nice. does look like she's dated some k-town goons in her life no <laughs> actually no not, not at all really I mean, come on. No, not really. No, 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 no. I feel like you've dated a couple Caspers and Spookies (laughs) and Creepies and Sleepies. You know, the Seven Dwarves. Yeah. (laughs) Seven Dwarves. No, 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 no. Not not really, not really. Okay. Actually, most of them aren't even from L.A., so where are yeah. they OC like Orange County area oh. there's yeah. goons in OC yeah, no 100%, there's, there's 100%. A lot of goons no I there. have I have but not that many not that many oh you're like a Fullerton Buena Park type of <laughs> right is that what we're talking about <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit maybe. So, Garden Grove yeah so you saw Jeremy and what was it about Jeremy like it, okay in the beginning there was nothing and then later on we were on <laughs> there the was po- literally nothing <laughs> honestly no no I was just like these are the people I work with I didn't even True. consider him a friend when I first came on which I thought was weird because they like, all if you thought work we were with friends. someone you would think that we we're friends no, no, I get right? it because when she came on she was just a guest yeah. at first it, is, I'll, you, yeah I'd be like oh like I know them right but I'm not like oh like we're close you know you think, about, okay, do you think right, he was sorry, cute right. did you think he was cute in the beginning yeah like at all like <clears throat> were you like physically attracted what was your hair to like back then I don't remember <laughs> if you look back it looks like a helmet you guys all got <laughs> you guys all got great hair I will say that oh, thank you imagine, will, imagine his hair without the mullet that's what my hair looked like that's true that's true it did but yeah, I started this wave. It's true. I could see that. I like the part. sides are parting. You know, I at one point, the all the all the kids on TikTok were wearing like you guys had it in the front, like the lamion at poof. the front. Now yeah. everyone's like slowly opening up their foreheads a bit. Yeah. It's like a new. Yeah, that's, that's what I used to have, just like right here. Right, right. That's no true. That's true. Yeah. Pull this off though. Long hair sucks. How do you feel about that? Um, she I has said, no say. I, I really, I really don't. Yeah. Wait, and, who wears the pants in the relationship? Esther. We both. No, no, no. no we both, no. They, we both they, do. Outside we looking in, do. we're voting Esther. <laughs> this episode is also sponsored by Tanga. Tanga is a Japanese sexual wellness brand that makes innovative, fun, and easy to use products that's reshaping the world of sexual wellness. They offer a wide variety of products from reusable and disposable toys like their viral Tanga egg to personal lubricants and much more. Their award-winning products have sold millions of units worldwide and it's a new experience everyone should try. They even have a female-oriented brand called Iroha for the ladies. Follow them on all social media platforms at Tanga underscore global and check out their website usstore.tanga.co slash funwithdumb and get 15% off store-wide for all your Tanga and Aroa needs. That's usstore.tanga.co slash funwithdumb or code funwithdumb for 15% off the entire Tanga store. And now back to the show. Well, you know what was funny in that new episode of the pod was when you were talking about when you actually mentioned like you guys thought she was hot too. <laughs> I was like, why I was, did you And then you guys pointed that? out like how weird that yeah, was, I and like, I was like, yeah, that was a little weird actually. <laughs> that was weird. Why is that? Why is that weird to be like you could appreciate somebody's physical it is, beauty? It is funny because there's times where I end up dating a girl that all the homies was like pursuing at one point mm. and we just have to ignore the fact yeah, we were, yeah, like, you know what I mean ignore it. I don't want to remember forward, it. we just ignore yeah. it like it never happened like it yeah, wasn't yeah. like <laughs> like we none of us tried to smash he went like, on, he, <laughs> bro he went on to tell me about her head game right after that no 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 oh no no God. no hold up whoa. oh my God. Whoa, 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 whoa whoa that is crazy the what was the question <laughs> What was the Whoa. question you guys asked? The question was, what was your honeymoon like? No, and then you immediately started going. No, no, that, the best hey, they asked me, they asked me, they asked her, they were like, how rate Jeremy's sexual, like sexual stroke game. Stroke, stroke game. game. Rate Jeremy's stroke. And then they said Esther, rate wait. Then they asked they Jeremy, like rate reverse, Esther's stroke game. And the thing that I mentioned was just like, this is also just a public question. I'd actually like to ask you. Yeah. Have you ever had mind-blowing head? 
<laughs> mind blowing. That made you think about it for weeks after. Like, or when was the first time you've had, like? It's like you remember it to this day. I, I will say this: I do feel like my most mind blowing sexual experiences are like you know the early on early mm. days you remember like those days where you just get high and you're having like high sex and the shit's amazing like <laughs> shit just hasn't been like that ever anymore you know what i mean like i've done way too many drugs at this point like everything is pretty much on the same plane like there's good shit you know there's like mid but like back in the day like it was just amazing you could be in a shithole apartment with roaches and and, and this <laughs> tiny studio apartment but the sex was fire in the summertime, you know, like you just sweat and drenched. Now you could have all the amenities, you know, jacuzzi, nice house, comfortability, and it could still be wet. I feel like he's like Bear grills. He needs to have like <laughs> obstacles that he has to get through yeah. to enjoy his he's night. A, he's I walk survival situation. <laughs> I walk three miles in the snow for some head. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you hear your parents say that shit like I walked three miles in the snow for school I'm like no you didn't <laughs> didn't even snow where you're from but I was basically talking to some of my friends and they are like all of them repeatedly were like they could count on one hand the times that they've had mind blowing head mm -hmm. and uh, he's never had it I've never mm. had it he's never had never it so from maybe you're just not into it though would you say that that's not head? one of your favorite? No, that's what people head. say if they've right? never, if they've well, never well, had mind blowing. Like He's like, I head. assure you, I am quite into right. head. Yeah. She doesn't yeah. talk to me, and I receive pleasure. What is there not to like? <laughs> <laughs> but I think people say that when they haven't had mind blowing. You know? Oh wow! There's a, there's a so level. what were you saying about this? Are were you gonna? No, I was just saying that they asked the question, they prompted <laughs> it. So, but there, there was like, no question about head, by no. the way. <laughs> it was about sex. It was about sex. Sophie's just like, right. where are you going with this? <laughs> I could see. Yeah, exactly. let, let me ask you this. Is there, a, in a job like this, it's podcasting, it, does the same rules maybe not apply with dating a coworker? Since, you know, it's not like you're working at Farmers Insurance. I don't know why I said that job. That's a place I worked at. I shouldn't have said that. But yeah. Well, no, because, no, it's, I think it's the same. But at first, when she joined the podcast, I was like, okay purely platonic, purely professional. And then when she started hitting on me, I was like... Aggressively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, That's I was what like, we meant by harassment, workplace harassment. At, fir at first, I kind of ignored it, but then she hit me up on the privately and was like, no, I actually want to take you out to dinner. And so in my brain, I was like, okay, you're attractive and we'll see, right? So we'll then when we started, we started talking and I was like, oh, I actually like her. Like she's easy to get along to. She's funny. There's a lot that we connect yeah. on. So I was like, okay, if we date, let's keep it private because if it doesn't work out, then we can just go back to... Mm. Yeah. Keeping, and it, you don't have to let the public know. It doesn't, it doesn't ruin the coworkers or anything like that. You yeah, know? I was like, another man that wants to keep me in the closet. <laughs> another private. Why, you've had that experience yes, with other boyfriends? Yes. Why would they want to keep you in the closet? Um, I guess, okay, the first, the first ex... Uh, I was the mistress, so I was kept wow. secret. Uh, and then the second one was kept because in the closet? Uh, no, okay, not like you know what I you know what I mean. Not like you she's know. a bit of a fob. Keep you hidden. <laughs> she, she keep yeah. you hidden. Yeah. That's what I meant. You guys know. And then the second one was that I think he wanted to have like options open. Like he liked me, but he liked the fact that other girls were just on some fuckboy shit. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have an exit strategy though? If things don't, I mean, I hope it works out. But if yeah. it doesn't, do you guys like write something out that's like okay? We know how this can. Yeah, we sell yeah. the podcast. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you no longer see Esther on the podcast. Oh. That's, the, that's the extra plan. We're gonna have to hold tryouts or something. We, yeah. We've seen some couples on podcasts go wrong. Like Bobby oh, yeah, and Kalila yeah. is a yeah. famous mm. podcast duo. I followed all the internet drama. That was a huge drama. And I've also followed the the people that have done like in depth videos. Of course, you probably yeah. know the actual details, but like people that are studying. Did you keep it to that in day. mind thinking about that relationship? I mean, I think what. Bobby does is way harder and something he said in one of his episodes was uh, that he regrets being so open about the relationship publicly so something we talk about is being private but not secret so mm. like we we I will draw a line about certain things we will or won't talk about yeah yeah because I don't I don't I don't want like I don't want a situation to happen we're arguing about it online the audience have partial story and then all of a sudden I have to explain myself more or whatever it is they're taking her side blindly 
Now I have to fight the comments. I think you guys will be fine. You guys handled this very well. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy lets the comments ruin his opinion. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. The minute I see a negative comment on a video, I don't look at the rest of them. Yeah. I just don't look back. Yeah, I don't yeah. open exactly. up the video. It'll go crazy yeah. viral. No. People will be like upset. And I just yeah. ignore it. I'm like, you're going to forget no, that's in two the best days. Thing you could Can do. you guys break down like how the workload happens in you guys' podcast? He's like, trying to farm so, us for information. No, 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 I'm not. I am curious. <laughs> just, Wait, or or people might be curious too. Like who handles what, you know? Oh, okay. So Vin and I, we don't do anything. And then the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I mean, <laughs> I like the way that sounds. It's very true. <laughs> so we just, and then it's Jeremy no, and then we talk. Yeah. So it, it originally started with me and him. He's really good at content creation. So he understand because he was right. making probably ten videos a day yeah, for bar himself. Chemistry and all yeah. Yeah. So he understands like how I describe it is like breaking down the cow. It's like first you film the episode. Then it needs to be broken down in long form that goes on YouTube. Then the clips that go on TikTok and all the short form. And you actually broke that down. Like yeah, like I made the first version of like our workflow. And uh, wow, and there's I'm a document. Like, yeah, yeah. There's a like very, a multi-page, like 17-page yeah. document. And Jesus. I'm a very busy, tired person. Yeah. So eventually, we had to hire people to take that over. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, and then I also just like review all the videos, like the clips that go on TikTok. Now we have people to review like the main episode. They drop the ball all the time because we'll be like, cut that out for sure, guys. I'll literally call them out by name. I'll be like Mario, make this, make sure this is cut out, and then we're watching the episode back, and it's me talking to myself like Mario, make yeah, sure you yeah, cut yeah. this shit out. How do you and him, because you guys are brothers, right? No, <laughs> oh, <laughs> brothers. Wow. They do look alike. What is this friendly bit. fire? That's I the most racist that from... thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. They're not brothers at all. I don't the even know where you got are that too from. Too similar. I don't know. His hair is similar. Why did you think no, we were no, brothers? Don't worry, a lot of people. Creature, there's a different energy to him. That's our son. You don't see, you don't see how he looks like us. How are you guys different? I guess in the, just general. We're not related, by the way. I just want to make no. That. I want I want to just assume you guys are like brothers. <laughs> so, I don't care. So yeah, growing up, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> who's got bigger mommy issues? So you guys handle a lot. Of th- <laughs> so you guys handle a lot of technicality, and you guys come in as talent, and then all you guys come and do much, the thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. We, we interviewed him because he was like a big internet personality. I ran into him. Just like hanging out through a mutual friend and I was like, you know, we, we, we got along. So I was like, yo, come on the podcast. His episode did very well and he just like his energy meshed with us. Like I remember I was laughing so like, you know, the laughing so hard where no noises come out. Your, your organs hurt. Like it was like the first <laughs> yeah. time I had laughed like that in a minute. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure. It was, I think it was you that told the joke. What? I felt like it was something you said that made me laugh. Though, huh? No, the joke was, was the joke was the oh, joke shit. was. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So he was very curious for himself no, no, of being no, like, no, he's no. like, so have you ever fucked a fan? Yeah, what do you it? think about fucking <gasps> fans? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he wanted to ask for himself no, to see no, no. if he was on the it same was, wave as him. It was the question we wrote but, down together. No, no, but the way that he was asking, it was he was so intent. He was looking at Vin. He's like, so have you ever fucked a fan? And then, and then just the way that he was looking, I just started dying laughing. Because it <laughs> wasn't about Vin. All I did was lean forward. And then this guy started roasting me. But Speaking that made which, all though, of those crack. Uh, how do you feel about that? How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> like, uh, why is he interviewing? us yeah. right? why are you interviewing <laughs> us no right? no no it's an open discussion <laughs> I, I fucked a fan yes yeah. uh, and and also have had girlfriends that are were fans yeah. that, that you met in the DMs that like slid on you? Yeah for sure. You These know what I mean that's how, I know I'm not saying it's not yeah. normal Esther have you? No. Have no, you no, been no. attracted to a fan? No. Right? I mean I have one right here. Aww. <laughs> were you a fan though of Esther? Huh? <laughs> that's the question. Were yeah you he, a fan? Was. he was. He was. <laughs> yeah. I saw the way you were looking at me that one time. No, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I, like, I, I do love how Esther has. I think you might be the most famous Esther. Oh, well, there's also um, that chef Esther. What's her name? We don't know. Her. Esther yeah, we don't know. Esther we don't, we don't know. I, I like to think Esther Perel. Yeah, but Esther I like to think her know. of her like as she's taken the Korean Esther. Oh yeah, yeah the troll. Oh, and, and yeah. owned the Korean Esther. It's I hard to own Korean Esther, yeah. by the yeah. way. I've known yeah. some. I, I just, I've met some Korean Esthers that have potential to be stars. You know what I mean? But she's taken the, the role. Yeah. Great Korean work. Esther, you've gotten Great it. Thank you. But are you still when we when you came on our show, that was many months ago though. But you had just gotten out of a relationship. What, which one was that? Oh damn! Oh, you were ready and more. Damn. I have just so many, man. Like it's wow. just like. In the, well, let me update you guys. In the recent months, she's been on a dating spree, and she's dated <laughs> older, middle, and younger. Yeah. And ranging you know, twenty, I, I'll tell you guys, ranging from twenty. Nine to fifty-three. What was the conclusion? I think I'm gonna take a break. This is hard <laughs> to say. I think we we try to talk about this, but I I don't want to. Don't go into specifics. Yeah, it's can hard go to go 53? into specific. Fifty-three. 
Yeah. And he, I want to say something in terms of energy she was and people sponge being ba- more... bathing this man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he had more energy than the 42 and 3 year olds that I went oh. on oh, dates okay. with. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's not a, a that that is that is not true about energy and all that stuff. Um I think when I have dated older, I it makes me think of my own like uh like my life. And like whether, yeah, and Are death. Are you 53? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, you're just saying like, like about how he lived his life. Yeah. Because uh, like, you were like, I'm oh, like, well, the thing is like, wild. I'm just like, I'm only going to be able to like have love for this amount of time versus mm. if I dated younger, I could, you you're know, my I mean? whole life. We have our whole yeah, life. Together. I don't know. There's yeah. something about that that I never thought about. Well, how long did you date this man for? Uh, I wouldn't call it dating. I went on like seven dates with him. Damn, that's seven dating. Dates. That's, is yeah, that dating? That's like married. Is, when is it dating and when is it? <laughs> Just like we've gone on dates. Like, what do you think? Three? <laughs> After <laughs> seven dates. So here's a good <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around that range. Yeah. I would say that it's more, it's less about numbers and it's more about like, like how you integrate into each other's lives. If you start doing activities outside of the Ooh. date, I think you're officially dating. Like going what to markets. Mean? Yeah. Going to Together, grocery store. Oh. Like, like, it's like, oh, you want to run this errand with me? But if you're like, I only see you when we have a planned date, then like you're, preparing to date maybe like you're like courting each other okay then i'm i was still by the seventh i was still being courted Uh, okay and i was still courting him i guess could i ask you something dating somebody older and younger right like do you find it easier to relate on references to like an older person or a younger person like with an older person you're like i love that movie casablanca it's me (laughs) (laughs) you know she's like dead ass he's like huh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, hold on a second. There are, I've dated 40 year old dudes that are older who are more in touch with the, whatever, the younger generation of like the way, like they're teaching me about how, like, they're, the, they're the, trying which, extra they're like hard. The, they're trying to stay up. They're trying super hard. They're doing I research. Think they're like the f- I'm the 53 year old like doesn't f- give a fuck anymore. He's like, good morning, my bra. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, ah, uh, I don't know if you use that for what he's like looking through his notes. <laughs> I, I, I dated a younger girl that was that she said something that kind of bugged me. She, um, <laughs> well, she, we're watching The Matrix and she she just like, I can't watch this. It looks too old. Oh, oh hell no. And Matrix was like revolutionary when yeah. it came yes. out, like the graphics on it and everything. And I was like, damn, this is kind of crazy. Like, <laughs> it made you second guess who the, t- the age range. It did, because what's the rule? The rule is, like, you date uh, half your age plus seven. That's, seven. And that's yeah, the yeah. minimum, mm-hmm. right? That's the that's the minimum. I feel like it's like a horny Oppenheimer doing the calculation. <laughs> like, yes, divide it by half, and then add seven. Oh. Voila! <laughs> that's it. Oh, horny, Opp- horny Oppenheimer is like Boppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess my age would be minimal, would be 25. Like, that's who I can, that's the minimum 25. I can date, which is, that's that's fine. I'm that was, that you was... and Leo, just the same. Actually, Leo goes up to 25. <laughs> then he goes to 25. Well, for you, that was the Matrix was around that age, wasn't it? The ma- The reference? Was it around there? What do you mean? The, the person that didn't know the reference of Matrix? She, she was around she that was age. Around yes, that she age, was around so. that age. But you had mentioned it felt a little bit too outside of your yes, comfort zone. Yes, the Matrix. Zone. That shit was revolutionary <laughs> when it came out. Have you dated older? Have you guys dated older? Yes, always older. Uh, always oh, older. oh, the guys I too. Always, I, I know. But, yeah. Wait, what's that? I won't say always, but yeah. How, how oh, drastic? Oh, how much older? 10 years 9 years Whoa. <laughs> wait how did you feel about that I'm curious about that I would say it like in terms of like references didn't feel any like crazy but like there was like the conversation <laughs> of children you know cause if it's the girl that's older it's like oh you gonna freeze your eggs or what's up like you know? oh for you you were worried about the kid situation with the person no 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 dating? it was like cause it's like okay if we're gonna like talk about being serious like I want kids right so it's like if we're if that's a conversation like how are you going to we just met or like a few months ago. So yeah. it's like, if we're going to date by the time we're ready to have kids, you might not be able to. So, so you're like, like, babe, do you mind freezing Wait, your eggs? <laughs> I mean, usually it'd be, it'd be the woman that, that, that brings up the, the conversation. Right, right. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's, I respect that because you're having serious conversations with older yeah, women yeah. you're dating. You know, yeah. it's not like just foolery. Mm. It's day one. I'm like, so uh, how many kids are you ready to freeze your eggs? <laughs> You I think do. he prefers but, older women, though, right? Like, you like? Yeah, yeah, until until recently, I think yeah. I'm, uh, I'm over. Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as you started posting, like, Hoodville posts on your IG stories, 
uh, I figured he's kind of over the serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's I have, no serious bone in my body. Right I will now. say, I have been seeing some more like uh-huh. fuck shit on your IG stories uh-huh. recently. A lot of like him. toxic yeah. memes. That's because he's been, hurt. Uh, yeah, he's I'm, going I'm, that, that hurt. what's going on? Damaged, and then I also hang out with this guy. That's a lot. what I'm saying. I was like, is this vid? And <laughs> this is some vid influence. Every, every time I see something pop up on my story, and then I post it, and I just like think about vid like in the background, <laughs> like this. Like. Yeah, you've definitely been under the, his influence. Yeah. 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 But I'm but I'm curious with the 53 year old after seven dates, what kind of ended it or like? Again, I I think I started thinking about like kids and like. I was. It started making me think about like death a lot, and I was like, "Oh my!" That, that's literally what it was. I was like, "I'm sorry." Like, I don't know what what it is, but like, I started thinking about my own like and my uh, mortality. Like, yeah, my my more. No, that's true. It was my mortality, and I didn't like that. I was like, "Why am I already thinking about that?" And it was because of like, okay, what if I only spend like 20 years with you in in love, and then like you die, and then I have to raise this child, and he's only in like middle school or something, or I don't know. It was Whoa. like, it's those are like, real questions. Crazy, no, it's real. Yeah. The good thing was, life insurance can I say, check. <laughs> you know, I didn't. Even th- what I realized is when I was talking about kids, I never considered this. Is that he was? I always thought if I get with somebody, we're both going to be working hard, and we'll need a, like a nanny or something, right? Because we, uh, me and my partner, might love work. Him, he was like, I'm gonna retire in two, three years, and I was like, oh, what? So that, that's and I was nice like, that's kind of yeah. sick. I never even thought about that. And he's like, you don't have to worry about working and all this stuff. And I, lit- I love working, so I know I'll always do it. But like, the, even the consideration of that was kind of really nice. But it still made me change my my age range now down to like forty something because I didn't like thinking about my yeah my mortality essentially. I think the one thing about work is like I'm always gonna work no matter how much money I have because I'm I, my work is things that I'm passionate about yeah. right. But what you don't want to have to worry about is like having to work to barely make the bills yeah. every yeah. month. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you want to have the freedom to work as a passion knowing that the money to like pay rent is all there so yes, yes. constantly. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trust me, you don't want to be at home doing nothing because you're comfortable. You yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah. super boring. I've done it for years. Oh. It's boring. Yeah. What, what was the experience with the younger guy? I haven't mm-hmm. taken it seriously, which I might change because of what you said is that I think in my head that if they're younger, they might not be interested in uh, being in a place where they might want to settle down or thinking about kids because mm. I wasn't at that age so I was like our, our, I don't know maybe that's like a I have my own like <laughs> <laughs> you watch that? <laughs> what you did doing? he just blow it in my ear because I felt <laughs> that smoke right in your <laughs> I'm like talking about kids you're like so I I have liked the younger ones because I feel like there's this energy where they're less problematic. I don't, there's like certain things about my womanhood that with the older people, I have to like generationally, I have to like talk about and like be, I don't know, I have to think about these things that like when I'm with someone younger, I don't feel like they, they understand, they understand some of like these like problematic things. This, I don't this know. is like actually, examples. this is actually a great example. I do understand that. I think as a woman, as you get older and you're going to deal with other men in your age group that are like extra problematic from like the generation they grew up in. So I can see how a younger dude could be more appealing in a way, right? Like, it's like a clean slate. Yeah, clean slate because they're com- growing up in this generation where like there's a far better understanding of like the patriarchy and all, mm. all of those things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, do you feel that? <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I've been pointed at as like problematic at times coming from my generation, you know, and like younger generations have like put me in check and that's fine, but... That's that's what yeah. You're like saying. I don't want to explain these things, and they're like, "What's them they?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know." I don't, how about I don't, that fifty year old dude? How how was he? <laughs> well, know? he worked in a he worked in um, a creative field, so I felt like that was also why he was kind of had like a youthful energy, maybe. Yeah. And he was aware of that, so he was he was fine. But other people who are in their forties, I've experienced some. I don't know some things where I'm just like ah, this is this feels outdated. Mm. That's yeah, how I felt. Things were outdated. Even if it's hip, you can't date a 50 year old that's gonna drop riz out of nowhere. <laughs> that's like dropping the n bomb, you know, for a 50 year old. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I mean. No matter how current you are, there are rules to these things. Is 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 uh? Were you dating multiple people at once? Yeah. So okay, that that's another thing. Um, 
I'm newer to online dating. I hadn't done that because I was in an eight-year relationship in the past. So it was like I had to lear- relearn the culture of dating. Wait, you got out of a eight-year relationship? Yeah, I was like in an eight-year relationship. I would have just so. killed myself after. <laughs> <laughs> eight years. Is, is Wait, the one much. white guy, right? The one that you—he was your fiance. Almost? I don't think he was white. No, I think he wasn't we, white. I think he was Thai. I had a Taiwanese. Why are you assuming it was white? Dude? Yeah. Uh, didn't you date? <laughs> didn't you no. used to date white? We I assumed one. He was oh, the first one. white guy oh, okay, I dated, and I was that first white guy dated was for like over a little over a year okay that's it okay i will say steph you know people always try to like point fingers at her dating white dudes she's always dated asian i've only Mm. mostly dated asians and no but (laughs) 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 um and different races like literally every other race i've dated it's not just asians i've dated mostly when i was growing up i dated mainly latina girls and then in my 20s and in current i've dated mostly asian women but like my experience on Raya, like it's just like all white girls. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> really algorithm. opened my eyes. I am the last dragon on Raya. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I am on there and it, it's cool. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I want to follow up, but I have not been good at following up after matching with women on uh, dating apps. <laughs> Why? I, I, it's just, I don't know. Like, I just haven't been going on dates. Like, I'm a little bit more shyer to pursue further than that. You're shy? <laughs> There's a, he's I, very shy when I've it comes to I've become bigger introvert to, as I gotten older for sure he doesn't like 100%. go hit a, like at a, at a bar or something I don't see you like going up like to a girl or like it's because he stopped drinking that's that, what that, I think that's a big it one it has affected right. me dude <laughs> it has affected something that I'm very impressed by is you still go out to the club sober I would just cut that out of my activities I was doing that but I told myself I don't want to be so introverted and and not be social anymore. Like I want to mm-hmm. live my life and be out there. You know what I That's mean? That's a good the Clubs thing. are so like when every when it gets to like twelve when everyone's like getting hammered, it's just like not enjoyable. You know, you can't have like a it not is. enjoyable for Cl- you. You you can't have fun in a so- club sober. True. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you saying? But I, I, but, I haven't tried that really though. Like, <gasps> phew, Ooh, that's an experiment. It's horrible for you guys. I mean, I've done it, but then usually I'll cave around twelve. Yeah. You're right, 12 o'clock. Everyone gets drunk, and I'm like, I can't be here unless I'm drunk. Yeah, then, they just yeah. start getting, it's like a different language they start speaking, and it's like you're the, the outsider. Vibration and changes, it lowers, and then you're like, kind of like, oh, I can't like exist here. Do you, do you have a strategy, you guys, for the online dating? Like, do you have some sort of strategy? Or, <laughs> hey, or is man, it also exhausting for you? Because This like, man lot, is the king. Wait, do you even online date? Or no, no, is it only really on, really I think it's only like anymore. social media. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, that's online dating, basically. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah, a 16 yeah. page strategy, actually. He's, kind of, <laughs> he's put together. A, a, a white yeah, paper. I have a workflow I can send you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you please? <laughs> I actually don't know if it applies from the, the female point of view. Wait, what are you struggling with? What do you want to know? Ask this man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Um... How do you weed? What are you weeding out? Like, what kind of people? Like, do you know exactly what you're looking for right now, in terms of who you want? In terms of dating, like yeah. seriously? Yeah. What the fuck? No, what was I, that face? No, I just said. <laughs> he's what just, the patterns? Yeah, he's just running around blind, just like you. <laughs> no, 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 not about blind. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I don't know if I'm the best person for weeding them out because I uh, I've, I've picked horribly in the past. So yeah, oh. are, are you guys mainly dating apps, or do you guys just more slide into DMs? Like, yeah, no, no dating DMs, apps, right? Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's the better purely, strategy. Purely Instagram. No, drop can. some of your sauce. I think they would be very. Yeah, can you like, say it from the girls? For, like, are girls hitting you up in the DMs, or yeah, do you first? I, I would say I do more of just like responding versus like outreach. So it's like a lot. It's like eighty percent inbound, I'd say, and then there's definitely the twenty percent where I'm like, this woman is too fine. I have to, I have to slide. So what are they saying to you when you're like, okay, I'll talk to this? Girls have no uh, initial risk because they don't need it. They can say, hey, Uh, you know, they'll say crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. They'll say sometimes I'll say crazy shit like, I want you to step on me, like that type of stuff. (laughs) But that's unattractive to me. Because what do you respond to that? It's a little, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I probably shouldn't. I should probably shouldn't respond. What's up then? (laughs) What's up then? Nah, my DMs have slowed down drastically as in the past few years. I've I've resorted to the graveyard of DMs. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? The message request. The message request. request. I'm like, let's let's dabble on the other side. Let's break on through to the other side. Uh, There's some wild shit in there. How? You're. I feel like you. 
I, hit more mainstream. No, no, I think it's because <laughs> the way I post is a little bit less like a social media. Inf- I've gotten more quiet. Uh, it's like less a less thought thought output. Yeah. You get more when you're throwing out bait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're not, then it gets let's it gets Let's pull up his Instagram right now. I feel like I saw you looking shredded under a waterfall. Yeah. I was like, bro, I had fight. the homie <laughs> strategize on that one. We we that was a collaboration. Also, it's more it's more what you're posting on a story than. In your feed that attracts like DMs because that's oh. like that's just the easiest reply to the story thing yeah. versus like feed is like you got to come and pub- comment publicly and like, that's like a whole commitment. That what kind of do. pictures do you feel like uh, in flood girls into your DMs more? Like wh- uh, what in your stories when you're very clear selfie of myself with call to action prompt? So like <laughs> very. <laughs> oh my god! I yes, love that. That's I know. Great. Yeah, so it'll, like an easy one is just like oh I look good today. Uh, selfie and then like good morning say it back and then oh! everyone in the DM saying good morning and then from there I'll just choose what I like I that. respond to wow. I, this is a cat this is a thing I'm curious with Vit because he definitely has a I can't like really put the words to the <laughs> genre of kind of content he creates <laughs> like I can't we categorized it yeah like what is, what is it? it is there a name his, for this his is like toxic suicidal but like just funny and his is like uh his is like love bombing. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. That's their, style. That's their two styles. Yeah, because it's really like, his is like mind trickery. Like, I'm confused. You know what I mean? I'll look at the content. I'm like, do I like this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, do I hate this guy or do I like him? <laughs> and and it's like, I'm like, this is some magician That's shit. So accurate. This is sorcery, dude. <laughs> so accurate. This is, and I can see like women being very like, what the fuck? I hate this motherfucker and strangely aroused. Like that kind of thing yeah. happening. I was cracking up. So he wrote this. He, he was talking to the camera about like his, his, I forgot. It was something traumatic. And this girl writes him this like paragraph DM oh, yeah. of like, I really connected with it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm reading it. I'm like, damn, whoa, what's it going to say back? And all it says is put your nipple in my mouth. <laughs> oh my and I God. was like, genius. Genius. <laughs> oh what a God. twist. I, I, <laughs> What is going on? I just went through a whole roller coaster of emotions. My, in this. my main goal with social media is just to um, be myself, and then people think I have autism. So, <laughs> and that, I enjoy it. That's the that's the genre. Yeah. Okay, okay, I, I like I it. Like like, that's the name for the genre. Does he have autism? Yeah. <laughs> no. It's just like very like semi autistic, like almost schizophrenic. It's, spe- it's spectrum sauce. Yeah. He's you know very I mean? present That's what I like with his post. Like whatever he feels at the moment is what he posts. Mm. So it could yeah. like literally go here, here, here. Whatever. I that's, that's how I've always treated social media. So I don't believe in close friends. I don't believe in a private account. It's just like you're gonna fucking either hate me for me or love me for me. Mm. I, I think that's. I could see one of your posts getting a call from one of these other guys. Like, yo, you good? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I've done that many times. Has, yeah. All the time. <laughs> Spe- I'm like, hey, buddy, you're part of a group now. Let's like, take let's take that one down. <laughs> like, we're, yeah, yeah, we're a brand. Yeah. We- I'm getting DM- I get DMs about him all the time. Like, your 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 son's acting up. Mom, come yeah. get your kid. Like that type of shit. Like, we have yeah. sponsors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. family to- oriented sponsors. I've toned it down quite a bit, but yeah, That's it's true. still pretty wild. Yeah. I'll go to Jeremy's room and be like, have you seen what <laughs> Vit posted? Like, should we text him? Like, should we go get Heidi Lau or something? <laughs> Jeremy's, Jeremy's like, like, no, this is good for the brand. I just, uh, <laughs> this is good for the brand. <laughs> yeah, I, I just finished a two or three day long rant. Actually, attack on K-pop stands. Oh, I've been following. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I sure go, wild. I'm I go, so invested, you know? Yeah. yeah. I go it's, on those maybe like four times a year. Yeah. So, yeah. And then there'll be like a like an apology thing you would do. It's like, yo, I just want to apologize on my thing. But it sounds like there's going to be know. a punchline after it, but it's just like a genuine apology. No, no, no. That, that, one, that one, he yeah. lost a bet. He lost a bet. <laughs> yeah, I, knew, to do I knew something it. was up because I was like, this is like a joke and where's the punchline? But there is no punchline. <laughs> Dude, he literally argued with us for 20 minutes. He's like, guys, I can't apologize. This will ruin my reputation. Like, yeah, he was like, I hate these K-pop stands. I, I, I think that's the thing. No matter you if you like K-pop or not, you're allowed to be criti- you know critique the genre. Well, and I like, think that's the problem with that world of K-pop, honestly. Like people aren't allowed to not like a certain thing. Yeah, I, they're I, ride or die. Like no matter what yeah. you say, if it's negative, it doesn't matter. That's it's what just, I'm saying. I think that's why I'll kill you in that. Do you have any fans like that on your side that will kill for you? That no, they won't kill for <laughs> me. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> We don't we don't really have that either, but I but Loki I kinda want it. When I see like the Swifties like destroying people, I'm like, that's kinda cool. 
She has like a power essentially. If someone ever wants to destroy me, my fans are gonna be like, he kind of deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like it's gonna happen. I do feel like that. I mean, it's cool, man. I, I truly do appreciate the fan base. You guys have a really great fan base. Like, I saw some of the live events you guys have thrown, yeah. and it's been, you guys are wilding out on stage. And is that something, is that like something you guys have always been like partying wise, or has this kind of, the, these live events you've thrown brought it out of you? No, I think these two are degenerates from the beginning. <laughs> you guys have always had that. Yeah, I think yeah. we enjoy a good time. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if degenerates is the Yeah, right but word. it's gotten to the point where, what are you now? He, you and him are the same. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've gone uh, sober for the quarter. Oh, it's nice. It's been a week. It's dry it's January. Been almost a week. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Still that's still a big good. deal. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't go out this weekend at all. Like, didn't see sunlight, so... Oh wow! Great, yeah. yeah, but so what made you? What was the decisions leading up to that so decision? I went, he he visited me while I was home back home New York, and then um we just went out six days in a row, just like getting obliterated. And then I was just I just kind of felt it at the end of that shit. I was like six Damn. nights in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like so I have this new like product that it's like a anti hangover like all natural supplement. Yeah, and it works very well. So it's like low-key enabled because like by day three oh, yeah, you're the waking supplement up, made him go out and have a six-day bed. <laughs> it was telling me it's like you have to do this other yeah. uh, but also i filmed it for for the business right. so it was all work oh it was work it was all work oh. i don't know if <laughs> was part of the <laughs> do we have to cut that no they were fine it's like you don't have to snort super bonsai for effects <laughs> i don't know why you've taken it in that way <laughs> But yes, yeah, so I was super bo- like I was waking up no hangover and then just like I guess I'll do it again and then after but after day 6 it was like there was nothing saving me from from feeling like shit. So uh so yes, yeah, so I kind of was just like I think I should take a long break and it was like this year is going to be big for my business too, so it's just like I can lock in uh, regain some liver points and like just you know do you have a certain period you're gonna do this for uh, probably like April I will reassess and see if I want to begin oh, wow. drinking wow. again wow yeah. that's, that's a while is that the longest you've End gone March. that will be, be the, the longest long- I've gone since I probably started drinking that's great wow. question for you sure so in his break right now he's allowing himself one time to get drunk but I'm like just is one. that so someone who's gone a year sober is that fair to allow him one Break I mean, freebie. You make, you make your own rules, you know. But you're saying one time during the street, like one night. Yeah, one night. I, I think that's acceptable. I, you know, I, I relapsed recently it's in okay, my Korea okay. trip. That it, doesn't change it, the fact that you're trying very hard. I did it in the but, motherland. It's a different time zone. Does it count? Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, but I did relapse and I got hammered. Next day, hangover so bad it brought me right back to sobriety. Mm-hmm. But I have to kind of admit it because, like, those are the rules. You got to, like, start to count again. Like, I can't be like. Didn't it make you want to keep drinking the next day and the next day? No. That's what I would do. I'd be like, I start again Monday or, like, I start again next month because I have to start fresh. You know what I mean? That's (laughs) Mm -hmm. the problem about, like, having one drink. It's like you start easing back into the pattern. Mm -hmm. That's why it's better not to just break it at all. No, I You know what I mean? But. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> what's your rebuttal so i mean like we're we're going to hawaii in february for like a good friend's birthday and i'm like i'm not so the issue is right if i go on vacation i'm like drunk the whole time mm. and then i'm like i can't be doing that no more but like i don't know how many times i can go out with like all my friends and not drink ever the whole time so i'm like if i cave once i'm not gonna beat myself up over it but if I cave twice, that's when I'm fucking up real bad. So yeah. Mm. But what I'm saying is, you should have like a hard punishment. You know, if you if like what like, five hundred cash. That he he wanted to me to give him money. <laughs> if Are I you a gambler show. or what? You yeah. seem like you'd be gambling out here. She is rubbed off on me. <laughs> That's oh, true. you be gambling? That's yeah. not gambling. Yeah. That's just like extortion. Like, not extortion. Because think about the decision. About fi- how about physical? How about so like ba- they what we came up with? Well, I have to take them out to like dinner if I fail. That's not gonna scare. That's not gonna scare him. A nice dinner. <laughs> what, like how much? Three hundred bucks yeah, per person. Oh no, no, per person. Is oh crazy. no, no, that's too, oh. that's too yeah, yeah, yeah. fancy. Okay. Yeah. Wait, when you guys go out for dinner, you guys split the bill between all four of y'all. Uh, depends. Yeah, depends. occasionally. Yeah. Some, okay. I mean, we, you and I have covered a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we guys just we like. usually pay yeah, quite a bit. But she's also taking us out for nice dinners. Yes, mm-hmm. she has okay. as well. Yeah. Nice. Vid has ordered me takeout once or twice. Wait, but with the sub- so with the sobriety thing. Well, no, for us. No, you oh. didn't pay for a hot pot. You forgot your wallet. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and then I paid for a hot pot. No, not that time. The other time. <laughs> what other time? Uh, we went out to hot right before his little mental breakdown. 
<laughs> Who's well, forgetting getting your like, wallet still split. happens, huh? Because <laughs> you could charge it on. Wait, your no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, we're going to we're going to the club, and he'll forget his wallet, and it's like like ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now the whole night's ruined. <laughs> that, that that gets annoying. Yeah. I got a homie like that too. Yeah. The, the, All the time, bro. The <laughs> forgetting the ID, homie. That homie is wild. And then he's like, no, no, no. You guys go ahead. It's like, no, we're not gonna just leave you. <laughs> When we do leave them. <laughs> we do, <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, let me ask you: Did you guys have your parents met each other? Mm, mm -mm. Oh no, no. Oh no, no. Our parents met us, or our parents each, uh, like yeah, each other. No, oh. no, no. But our, I've met her mom, and she's met my dad. That's cool. What are your you thoughts on each too. other's Before like? Yeah, I met your dad. Too. What do your parents think about like each other? Uh, I'm my mom thinks he's funny, <laughs> and my dad thinks he's funny. Based on like what? Just like I wasn't in cracking any jokes <laughs> or like podcasts. Oh, because he can't speak Korean, so he would try his oh, best, and they'll be he like, can't speak "Oh, any Korean? Uh, I'm pretty so good. No, I you're probably, not. I can I can Lie understand like seventy five percent, eighty percent. My but, comprehension's good, but you can't really speak. I can't speak it back. Wow. Yeah. Are can you speak Korean? I could and write it. Fluent. Yeah. Speak Korean. You you three speak Korean. I get are you pointing at it? No, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're really challenging this one. Try to. I think you could speak better Korean than that guy. You guys always say that, but that's not true. But speak. If you speak to me in Korean, I can understand. No, we we know that back. you could understand it, but that's if a I useless if, skill. Oh, you're gonna. What are you gonna do? Respond in English to somebody who doesn't speak. I English? go into Google. <laughs> that's so when a I, useless <laughs> skill. Hey, when I was in when I was in Korea, the way that I communicate with the taxi drivers, I put it in Google Translate. And just play the translation yeah, in there. I guess that works. At that point, though, you got to pretend you're not Korean. You got to be like, I'm Indonesian. <laughs> you, he has sent me like uh, sexual messages through Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Tell like us what, what it said what in Korean. What did it say? Yeah. I, this is random. <laughs> He's like, I love carrots dipped in ranch. <laughs> like what? <laughs> it was literally like. I was like, what is he talking about? And then I was just like, oh, that's what he meant. And like, literally, I had to decode it. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> keep that private. <laughs> have, you have you spoken any, have you done any dirty talk in Korean in bed? Yeah, we have. Who, from which yeah. side? <laughs> that side? side. I was. And I, I go, ah, man. Yeah. 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 I'm always curious about the dirty talk in Korean yeah, in bed. Yeah, yeah. I've done the choa. <laughs> <laughs> Which means what tone? You which, said it like that. Like. Let, me, let me tell you what choa means. It essentially means you like. <laughs> exactly. What it and means. then you would respond, choa, <laughs> like. which is weird that the response is also I like. You know, but <laughs> you like. I so like. Me, well, what is the the dirty talk you would say? Let me. Damn. Can, Should I? Can I say it? Like what? Well, I I. I just pretend like I'm a teacher. Like he's a student. <laughs> Wait, there's full on role play here. Wait, are yeah, you saying characters. like what? <laughs> Wait, you pretend you're the teacher? Yeah, because I'm the Korean teacher. Because I speak Korean. So you're saying like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which means where's the homework? <laughs> um, I okay. I, this here's what I assumed. I thought the dirty talk would be like like oppa. Or something like that. Like, is that? No, that's not. That's not enough for me. <laughs> I need. I need the whole. You need a backstory. <laughs> yeah. She wants a monologue. It's a. It's a whole scene. And he has to learn some. You know, some way. And what? You know, best way to learn is through sex. He has With to learn. With action. Okay. Oh, that's a proven fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but generally, it, not not even in Korean and English, you guys would engage. In like some dirty talk and like what would those things be and because korean oh, in english yeah we don't we Celeste. don't dirty talk yeah not in really english. oh really yeah no oh, it's just po silent the whole time yeah <laughs> sounds and it's like Missionary. there's already the podcast we, we, yeah. yeah. the we kind of crack up a lot <laughs> you crack up you break mode yeah Bro, these two are the silliest people you'll ever meet <laughs> like hanging out with them in public like they'll randomly break into a skit like like, Aww, like he'll start acting so something out and then she just picks up on it and starts like being the other character yeah and then now Aww. you're like watching a six minute skit yeah that's, that's so cute. That's cute i love it that. is very cute Wait, but, uh, but uh, speaking of like korean riz like i finally watched singles inferno for the first time yeah. did you guys watch it yeah uh, i, I have i didn't it, see yeah. the new new uh, okay. not the new one but i mean regardless like compared have you guys ever seen like love island mm -hmm. yeah love yeah. island is like rated r Sing Singles Inferno is like rated G. Yeah, right. yeah, so when yeah. I watched Singles Inferno, yeah. I was like, it would be like 
she, they would like touch yeah. and the camera would zoom, replay it seven times, and the hosts are like, oh, mo, 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 yeah, mo, yeah, mo, yeah. oh, oh, and I'm like, yeah. is that what it's like when you go to Korea and like it's very nah, like, no, 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 they're no, it's rough. dogs, but there's dogs? Said, there, yes. there's a lot, yeah, there's a Mom lot, of, there's a lot of one night stands going on and all of that, 100%. but there isn't on television. You can't just show people crawling into each other's bed and like giving each other hand jobs, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, well, not even that, but they don't even they don't even kiss. No, it's very looked right. down upon. Oh, like to if, display that on TV. Yeah, it's like you're a slut. What do you, is, want, do you want a degrading society or no? No, okay, no. Fair, like if fair. It, if it went on Singles Inferno, he would have to put like bandages over his face tattoos. <laughs> Straight <laughs> up, he looked like Nelly over there. Just <laughs> he looked like a burn victim. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What's wrong with you? But I would wow. say Singles. You know, one thing I appreciate Who just about. Said, oh. <laughs> She did. You know one thing. I, I'm sorry. One thing I I do hate and love about Korean dating shows is they are very shallow. When you ask like, "What's your type of guy?" They'll be like, "I like small noses." Like it has nothing to do with their personality. And are they funny or not? And to me, that's like fucked up, but it does just help narrow it down really quickly. <laughs> you know, like you got a big schnoz, you're out of here. You're not, you're not even in the running for this role. I, you know what I mean? So there's something nice about that, but it is shallow. Would you say that you speak enough Korean to go to Korea and be able to spit game? Oh, yeah. I've always been confident about my trash Korean. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hit us with an opening line in yeah, Korean. Because yeah, yeah. I've never, ever been able to like spit riz in Korean. <laughs> my opening line. First of all, I'd probably hit him with a chugyo, which is the same, <laughs> which is the same thing I would hit a ajima at a salong tag spot. Which is, chugyo, the same oh, y- thing I would yell across a Korean restaurant is the same thing I would start off with Riz. Like, <laughs> chugyo, you, you got that part down too. Chugyo, yeah, they you already know chugyo. the fact that you're already like Korean American and have that American accent is yeah. cute to girls or yes. to guys mm. out there. So you just acting like a Dum dum like over there, <laughs> they like it already. Like, I I think there's they do find improper Korean kind of cute and charming. You lean into it, don't you? Well, like they, people like I think in, Korean Americans lean into the fact that they have that charm of being able to talk in this like kind of stupid Korean, <laughs> like broken English you, Korean. I feel like you that's get like, away with saying vulgar shit because it's uh, it's excusable, you know? Yeah. Oh. So you might slip something kind of dirty. It's like, I, I don't know better. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just, like, <laughs> it's like I love your dick. Oh, oh sorry, that's not right. Yeah. Well, in America, we do that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like my, uh, my game, like in. America is not that crazy good already. Well, you're not like, even trying here. I'm not good at like cold, like just going up to a girl. Like I usually have like wreck do some wild shit and I'll step in and be like, excuse my silly friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's a crazy one. I'm not isn't he? Rick, relax. Now, what's your name? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. That's good. The ice break. He, he breaks the ice and then I slide in usually. Uh-huh. He's like, I'm a, I'm a, he's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. That's, that's hey, kind of my thing. This guy is very good at going up to anyone like in real life. I, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah, he's confident as fuck. Yeah, give us, give us, a, give us a tutorial. Hi, what's your name? Blah blah blah. Oh yeah, you having fun? Yeah, you want to make out? <laughs> like, that, that's a huge jump right I, there. I, I've third seen that line, in third person. Line. It's usually the third line. You'll 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 have the audacity to jump right into that in the third Pretty line. Much, yeah. But did that person? Is this someone you already were vibing with in the room? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. What is the f- percent rate that it, it does work out for you? It with like the with the makeouts, out. rarely it doesn't. Yeah, wow. Well, I used to go out more, yeah. And I will say this: I I feel like I can't just take that advice because you commit. Mm-hmm. Like your eyes don't shift. Like yeah. I, no, no, no. It's he, dead he, on. Yeah. Like I think that's what it is because it's like even if like I'm I'm going up to her cold turkey. Like I say that shit with a laugh, like with good energy. So it's like even even if they say no. I can play it off as a joke. Ah, I'm just playing. Yeah, he's a vibes guy. You want to make out? <laughs> <laughs> At that point, the he girl feels like they have to say yes. Gonna fucking make out. She's like, what's going to happen if I say no? <laughs> Hell, nah. yeah, I don't like this narrative we're painting. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's some funny shit he says where it's like, it's like, it's like, why don't you love? It's like, if you, why don't you want me? Why yeah, well, yeah, why don't oh, you yeah, want yeah, me? I have I seen this in that. the content. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit's funny. Or also, like, you threaten to kill yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like you could very ter- tell he's joking. It's like, yeah. Very and clear. only he could do that. Yeah, like, only he could do it. <laughs> girls so. will find it cute if he does it. If Wu Talk was to do it, they'll be like, okay, all right. I think Wu Talk can pull no, it. I've, has, done, the, I've has, done that too. What the no, fuck? you have different riz. No, I've done very the kill yourself. Can you do Once yours? Once I seen him do it, I was like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> that one worked. I'm whipping that out. Wait, what's yours? I want to. I want to hear yours. For what? Thing. Like, I'm not as good as him as going up to people like randomly in public. Like, <laughs> usually, like, there's an underlying understanding that like we want each other, and yeah. then it's like mm. I'll just say whatever I want at that point because it's like I know like there's connection here. In the last couple of years, like, would you say he's influenced you? In, in ways He's of maybe approach. more immature, I would say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but not in like a negative way, in like a, I'm having fun. Yeah, just like, <laughs> yeah. I think the, I, I think what they've taken is like, I don't take myself as seriously. I think they take themselves less seriously now too. Right. I, I think you're the same. You didn't take that from me. You've always been silly. But like, mm, I've seen yeah. him like, like even the stories or shit, like yeah. right. let loose a little more. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. in my case, they've made me more mature and I care about business more and my career. Whereas okay. before I was just kind of free balling it. I was like, whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever happens, happens. I'm, I'm like you with like the business part. I've noticed that you guys are re really good with handling your business and being on top of it and actually caring about it. Like yeah, I always liked playing the kind of stupid guy to the business. Like oh, I don't do the business. Like I, I'm the creative guy, Yeah, you know, and I leave it to my team or whatever. But I realized, like, nah, like, I'm at the age I should step into a room and be aware of, like, my business and the structure and the numbers of things. It's not it's not cute anymore to be the guy who's just like, I don't care about the business. 100%. You know what I mean? It's, it's interesting you bring that perspective because I used to manage artists as well. And a lot of times, music artists, and a lot of times they just want to be like, oh, I just, like, they want to be that until things go wrong or whatever it is and then they start asking too many questions and i'm like well i tried to have you be involved in that but you didn't want to yeah. so now if you want to it, it becomes a balance but i think ultimately too it's like you know your brand the best you know what's going to make you happy you know what's going to make you the most money and, and whatnot so like i think a lot of times it's kind of shocking for people that maybe have virality or some kind of success on the internet and then they realize how much effort it is really behind the scenes to have a sustainable career and so like that's why I think that content creation or like artistry is it's like it's 10 percent in my opinion and then 90 percent you got to know business like mm. you got to be on time you got to know how to send an email you got to know how to talk to people in a room right that's really what's going to propel you further than just being ultra talented there's one percent like a Frank Ocean that could just be a dickhead but other than that <laughs> you're not Frank Ocean not you but like most of you aren't Frank Ocean so get on the business side now yeah and I will say it's you can kind of like let your team handle it or whatnot that's what later on you end up like endorsing some stupid shit you're holding some ridiculous <laughs> thing and you're like how did i get here and that's because you weren't yeah. on top of your thing but i was really embarrassed recently where i met with like a young content creator she was like this girl who's in her early 20s really successful content creator and she was asking me about my numbers and shit and i couldn't tell her <laughs> shit i couldn't tell her anything and she was like dumb you gotta know these things <laughs> you're like and, my name's not dumb for any reason <laughs> <laughs> or else i'd be smart <laughs> yeah, yeah. i wish i could say it's an act but it's not but i really kind of got embarrassed you know what i mean mm. because she really knew her shit and I'm and I'm always talking about I'm, oh this year I'm gonna kill it this year I'm gonna kill it. I can't kill it without knowing these things I gotta know my analytics and numbers and what my rate is and all that stuff yep. you know what I mean like yeah. if my accountant wanted to take take advantage of me right now and like <laughs> fuck me over and steal my money he totally could <laughs> That's That's what I, your account watching this like ah oh, okay that's all I needed to hear <laughs> like I could totally be fucked right now by any of my team members Damn. you know it, that, that's what I'm saying it's like yeah. it's fucked well you up. got also got lucky too in that sense that you have people that you can deeply deeply trust I think ultimately you kind of have to have one person you can trust people can fuck each other over at any moment I yeah. think that you just have to have somebody you can ultimately trust yeah yeah and I do have somebody that I've been working with over like 10 years that nice. I can trust in that way and I mean, have you been fucked over? I'm assuming you've had situations where you've been fucked over. I've been scammed. I've been scammed for over dollars. Damn. At one lump sum amount. And this happened probably in the last three years, which is really embarrassing. Oh, man. Being scammed is embarrassing because it's you can't really be like out there reporting it. Because <laughs> if you report it, you, you look dumb as fuck. <laughs> like, Big facts. It's like, officer, I'm a dumbass. You know, it's like, that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? And you, you don't want to report it because you still feel like you're going to get the money back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not going to, you're not going to get the money back if you report it. You got to hold off a little bit. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Damn. No, but I mean, don't, don't feel weird that you're maybe like she's young and now you're figuring it out, right? Like it, it comes at whatever time. Like I, I was similar to you. I'm 30. 
I'm about to be 33. So this only happened where I learned all this stuff or took it very seriously when I started my own business at 29. Mm. So like in a very short amount of time, once you pay attention to that stuff, you'll learn it very quickly. So yeah, it's not like I I had this my whole life. Yeah, I I had it later than ever. I all my other friends had it before me too. Mm. So yeah, I, I love it, man. I love seeing you guys like just popping up with new business ventures you know what i mean especially these two i could see these two popping up with a new thing and you guys will have something kind of to follow a blueprint you yep. know like you guys are surrounded Absolutely. by people who can support you have already a structure in hand yep. and you guys support each other businesses yeah it's yeah. like get drunk off, off nectar and then get on super mind's eye exactly and then what's after that like yeah, get on our show and then make a fool out of ourselves <laughs> so so we, i can make money yeah the cycle just continues there's <laughs> yeah. a whole cycle like, no we got really lucky with each other that's great I, i'm happy for you if there was a business that you guys could individually start like what would it be it was supposed to be a ramen shop you know, oh, like yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Actually, we did. This is on record. This is on video. We discussed opening it. You know, when you go to like Korea or Japan, they have those corner ramen shops. Mm -hmm. No, like no workers. It's all robots. Self, you, self, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you buy the packets of ramen. You make it there. They have like the toppings, toppings and the ingredients. Yeah. We were thinking about opening that. We were <laughs> yeah. like, we recognized it before yeah. the trend. We were like, there's no place like that in LA. And it just opened up. We just didn't have the capital for it, and they just opened one. She sent it to me. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. we're gonna oh, sue them. <laughs> nope, we're gonna there'll be something else Spike people complaining out. about like oh i can make ramen at home like then just make it at <laughs> home <laughs> no, it's, you're paying for the experience and you're paying to like eat there you know i what agree I, mean? I think they'll, they'll probably make the ramen better than i can make it i thought you have I to make it yourself you gotta make, make it yourself, it yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no but i get i get why people complain but it's just like why are you complaining because the thing is like I don't know. It's just it, like you go to a cafe, you pay like seven dollars for a drink that you can make at home too. Yeah. You just go there for the atmosphere and for like the vibes, you know. You could fuck up ramen too. I fucked up ramen. <laughs> it's it's always the water levels. Like I always get the water levels a little too oh, much water, yeah. too little, you yeah. know. Yeah. Absolutely. But but also for me, it's like I'm not trying to buy like a thirty pack of ramen in my house. So it's nice if I go there and they you have, have every selection time. of. Yeah. And there's ramen, dude. I just went to H. -Mart. I don't live near Asian. I lived in Culver City. A while back so there's no asian grocery yeah. i recently went back to an h mart i didn't realize there's a thousand ramen brands now mm. yeah. a, a thousand but yeah I, i just feel like the selection is nice too at, at a little shop like that the market, I do like the market that. is very saturated I, I feel like with ramen though it's like that's one like with clothes people are like i don't know if i want to try a new thing uh my my homie i just recently heard my homie started a like a boom box business like you're not beating sony <laughs> you're not beating <laughs> Like <laughs> boom boxes, so especially specific. with electronics. If you buy shit, I want it from a reputable brand because I know it's good, right? But with ramen, it's like, well, if your design is good enough, I'll try I it. I mean, but I will say, you guys are both in competitive businesses. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. like, I mean, mm -hmm. hard seltzer, yep. the hangover cure is getting popular as well. You guys are, it's not like, you know, you guys are setting yourself up for a big challenge as well. Yeah, you know? the, the secret sauce really is the social media angle. And right. like, really, what, like, all, so. I read this marketing book that was really good, 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. It's just a list, 22 Laws, very simple book. And basically, rule number one is be first in a category. And rule number two is if you can't be first in the category, create a category you can be first in. So you can think about that all day long, right? So it's like taxi cabs existed, so Uber was like, yeah. or private cars existed, and Uber was like, okay, we'll be the first that you can order it on your phone mm. or something like that. For hard seltzer existed, but I was like, okay, but no one's making the Asian version mm. of hard seltzer and the market was big enough for that made sense but also the secret sauce is, is when i when i say like asian alcohol you probably think of like sapporo height yeah. like just these old legacy brands i'd say the only one that's probably good at marketing in the modern age remotely is jinro sort of yeah. mm. but other than that there's nobody out there that's making modern asian alcohol cool and they don't know how to market on instagram social right. media, like tiktok none of that so that's where ultimately i saw the hole i was like mm. Yeah, like I'm, there's just a huge audience that you can reach through these channels and you can do it for pennies. Whereas back in the day, to start an alcohol brand, you'd need like five, ten million dollars because it's just so expensive because you're fighting against basically monopolies. But these yeah. uh, cans have also gone through an upgrade since I first received them. <laughs> yes, yes. This is our brand new pack. We got four unique flavors here and Asian flavors. So this one was inspired a lot by like the tropics. So we have Lehing Pineapple, Mango Melon, Passion Fruit Orange Guava, Green Grape. Wow. Yeah. Grape Make sure you guys support these guys. Good. And then right Wutok on. has a super bonsai, which is a hangover cure. Yeah. So, I mean, I read the same book as him, and I took those two laws into, into account as well. And it's like, 
so for us, like supplements is obviously like a, a very big category, but hangovers itself is something that's like unheard of in America. It's blowing up. If you like count like how many people drink alcohol and wake up and hangovers are an issue for them versus how many brands there are and what market they have of the total addressable like hangover market, it's very small. And then similarly, like we're approaching it from a brand angle too for supplements. And it's like, like if you look at like Erewhon, Peloton, Equinox, right? Like health is a very like, luxurious thing now and all of those brands like made things very cool like erwan made grocery stores cool so for us it was like there's no supplement brand that people love enough that they're like i'm repping this brand like i'm taking pictures of the bottle like everything this brand does is cool as fuck because like you go to erwan you're posting the smoothie but you're not going to ralph's and posting their smoothie right so yeah. like what's the difference there and it's all brand well ralph's doesn't have a smoothie no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> regardless no, no no but even in the supplement category you look on the shelf and it looks like something in your grandpa's closet mm -hmm. yeah like it's nothing cool like exactly you, so nothing that, attractive there's nothing cool about it and then also there there was another brand we looked at where it was like they did exactly that and it was liquid death and it's like yep. they went into water uh -huh. Nothing about their product. It's a good product. It's quality. You can, you know, trace it back. They're like environmentally friendly, all that. But their differentiator is that it's like, it's called Liquid Death. They make content that's like super edgy and cool and different. It has nothing to do with water, but it's such a powerful like brand and content engine that it is interesting water because that, of, yeah. that marketing has been very interesting. Exactly. Liquid yeah. death and water in a can. It's like tasty. actual quality water. Well, going back to Erewhon, how, like, you guys big on Erewhon? I've love never Erewhon. been. I've never You've been. You've never been? Never no, been. is it good? Really? It's amazing. I, I, I love the smoothies there. And they are ridiculously expensive. He's got a membership. How much do you pay <laughs> for the, you How a, much is the membership? I got, how much I got the low tier membership. It's $100 a year. <laughs> they sell oh, membership. it's like oh, Costco? It's only 100 yeah. What do you, what do you, you get like 10% off everything and then you accumulate points and you can get more smoothies. More Expensive so smoothies. after you spend five grand on a smoothie, you get one free smoothie. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I do truly do love the stuff there. It is, yeah. It's good. The hot bar is good. Yep. The smoothies is fire. Even the yeah. merch is kind of fire. Yeah, yeah. their Dude, breakfast amazing. burrito is like oh. one of the best it's in good. LA. Wait, key. how much more expensive is it than Whole Foods? More expensive. It's, it's like expensive. a smoothie more. is actually $7 eighteen more. about eighteen dollars for a Haley Bieber smoothie. Okay, it's like eighteen dollars, but yeah. like that's. Uh, it's isn't it nine dollars for the big one at smoothies at, cost? I this shit comes out to like twenty dollars a smoothie or something. And they're not even like that big to be they're honest. Not that big. So how are people? But you watch this? them make it and you understand why it's so expensive. It takes it's so labor intensive because the reason why it's so Instagrammable is the layering. So it's like mm. what like you read the ingredients and it's like thirty ingredients. They're all organic, like super healthy for you, right? And then you're watching them. They have to blend it three separate times because it's like three colors. And you're layering uh. the red. Then you get the white layer. And then you add the pink. And it's like. No wonder. You just had this man work for an hour to make a smoothie. Uh, like, you got paid. They're, 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 and they're putting these, like, special things like marine collagen that I've never heard of. And then also, if you have someone like snake Haley oil. Bieber, like, <laughs> saying she... Yeah, snake oil, yeah. but it's like Haley Bieber's... No, he doesn't, he doesn't know saying, anything. He doesn't oh, know. he doesn't understand. Oh, I didn't even know what snake oil was. No, I'm saying, like, what is... <laughs> I just I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. selling yeah, snake yeah, oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think marine collagen is doing something for you? Yeah. yeah. They're saying it's doing nothing. Right, right, right. Yeah, what's that? Well, uh, I believe Korean seaweed soup? I'm blanking. Miyokuk. Miyokuk. Eat that. Yeah, that's true. 99 cents. Does it not really do anything? What's up? Does it really not do anything? No, I'm, I don't know. He I don't has know. no idea. You know how wow. everybody's been pushing CMOS? Yeah. But like, I don't know anybody, of... nobody in my circle that's actually been on CMOS. And I'm going like, to try it. It's CMOS like milk. very popular. I think milk is healthy. Oh, yeah. You're oh, no, supposed no. to You're supposed eat milk. Yeah. yeah, right after you give birth. Mm -hmm. right? I feel like, like a smoothie is quicker on the go than milk. You know what I mean? I'm not going to keep seaweed soup in a thermos and just like take it around. I Maybe that's what you should. I don't even like milk. Damn. I need to check out Erwan, though. Milk, we we ate too much as a youth. Exactly. Like in church, all the shit. I was like, yo, I'm having too much milk. That's the shit that when your Korean mom is lazy. Yeah. And making milk. And rice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you I, should supplement that. Milk. Well, well it's CMOS is essentially that, right? It and is, right? That's something that we're looking at as well, yeah. But when you say it's milk and it's like, or Korean, <laughs> it, Korean it sounds like more like authentic, yeah. too. Yeah. Do you want me to give you guys a free business idea that will make you zillionaires? Let's go. So, you guys have ever been in Whole Foods and seen like Kettle and Fire? They make broth? Kettle and fire, I, they're just like bottled broth? or what? Yeah, It's just in that cardboard box. Okay, it's yeah. Bottled broth. And, and, the, the wave right now is anything Asi Asian consumer product good. So I made Asian art seltzer. There's like sauces, noodles that are all Asian focused that are getting all my friends that are these founders of these companies are getting nationwide deals at in Kroger's and Target and Whole Foods. It's a huge signal. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't anybody go get the license of Hanbat and put that in a box? Korean bone broth is the most marketable thing. It's so good for you, filled with collagen. Right. And the white people would love it. <laughs> 
Damn, that's and like it's a, the best. It tastes way better than just like beef broth from Kettle and Fire. Like I didn't realize how specific the restaurant was going to be. <laughs> now, yeah, like, you're like specific. It's very high easy high. stealable idea now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're, you're right. I, I do think, yeah, ox b- bone broth, all that stuff. No it's, one's making. I I went to the grocery store because I was like, oh, this is a zillion dollar idea. So I went to the grocery store to see if anybody's doing bone Asian bone, bone broth specifically, and they're not. Wait, mm. but if you go to a Korean uh, market, right, they have the instant bone broth thing. Yes, you know what I'm talking so about? Yeah, they do, products actually. In yeah. H-Mart, but the, H-Mart is making good money, but the real market is we're in America. Okay. So our audience for Nectar, there's a huge portion that's Asian, but it's actually the minority percentage. It's way mm. We have tons of Hispanic, Caucasian, mm. black fans of our product. But because I do of the K okay, wave. So you're but saying I like do, put it into Ralph's. Essentially, yeah, which put, it not, into Ralph, yeah. put it into Ralph. Put it into Sprouts. I do Air wonder One. if like H Mart is becoming a household mainstream kind of market. Slowly, it's it is slowly. too slow. Too slow. Yeah, you don't want to like heard. compete in a smaller playing field by uh, catering to only Korean mm-hmm, people. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah. you will be the only Korean bone broth in Air One. And everyone would be like, ooh, Korean. What's so special? I would like to get better? something up in Erewhon, though. You know yeah. What I mean? a, that's fun a, flex. With, a fun with dumb what? bone broth? No, no. That's like, yeah, that's just. You'd have to, you'd have to package gross. it and make it look all special and cool looking. But. Okay, well, thanks for that idea. Thank you that's for the bone <laughs> With everybody in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever no, makes it, cut us about. a little piece. Come on. Yeah, yeah. If it does well. You heard it here. I want to bring up something because. Right now on the internet, I feel like there's a renaissance of Asian American content creators and specifically like podcasting, right? You have you guys, you have 949, Suburb Talks, a lot lot of like Asian voices, nuanced conversations about different things. I just wanted to hear like your thoughts on like why now in this current moment and like the effects it's had on like even identity alone. I think uh, I've, I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately. It's it's like I don't want to say y'all's generation, right? The the generation before me. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it it hurts more with y'all's for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I gotta that say, y'all's crazy right now. Yeah. He also but, called you forefather. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I mean, like, as a kid, I was watching your videos, like, yeah, yeah. the battle rap shit. So I, it's just like, that's how I view it. Yeah, different generations. Yeah. Even every so four like, years, it's like a different generation. I think yeah. I think back in y'all's time, it was like like. <laughs> It was like you. It was uh, Ryan Higa. It was it was Kev Jumba, right? right there right, was right. very few Asian big creators, and I I I think those like they all centered the reason why they got so big, right? Was Asian kids were watching them. Oh, they're so cool, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. But what they failed to do is invade white spaces and black right, spaces right. and black communities and white communities and in, in a way of like making people view Asians as like, oh, y'all are mad cool. And I also think that. Uh, uh, parents have always just been like, be a doctor, go to school, blah, blah, blah. Whereas people now see it as like, oh, I, if I have a passion for content creating, it, I can make it Like even the thing. parents see it as a lucrative business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're more understanding. I wouldn't see it, say they're fully supported, but you know what's an interesting Way more thing? understanding, yeah. That's a really good point. There was a conversation where someone was like, why isn't there a uh, Asian super like rap superstar, like a Jack Harlow level? Right. And it's because it's so new to our culture, but I bet in t- there's five years, ten years, there's some kid right now that's, that's going to be I agree. going, yes. 100% yeah, yeah. So I, I agree. So I think it's well, like the, parents, the wave. You guys set the initial wave, and For now sure. the influence is it, finally... It's, well, it's all timing. Like It couldn't timing. have happened maybe like you know ten years mm-hmm. ago or something because... You have to get the general public fucking with Asians like they're the cool shit too. And I will say, that, K-pop started that wave. It did. A but you guys have cooler parents too. They're Gen X. Don't, aren't your parents Gen X? Nah, they're not. I'm, I'm, I'm older. I'm older. So. Oh, okay, but like I feel like they they're already like they're they were like part of like the punk scene, the ska scene, and so they're like my more. My mom was definitely not. Listening. <laughs> yeah, my mom was definitely. <laughs> but I don't know how old you think you guys they are? got like Asian like parents with like... mohawks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I, I guess I don't know. You guys are. My not dad as... was a pastor. <laughs> I would say my mom's always been pretty progressive. You think their parents are like, my son has Riz. <laughs> I think I think you guys are What do you are think is happening right now in the I guess crib? I assume that they're younger than they are, but they're not as young as I think they are. Wait, how? I thought you guys were like 23 or something. I'm 24. I'm the youngest. I am. See, that's why your parents... <laughs> Damn, you're 24? Yeah. Damn, you are pretty young. Yeah, yeah y'all. So when we're you young. actually say no, you no, no, guys, no. it makes sense. When you're yeah, like, yeah. y'all. <laughs> wait, wait. Guess how old she is. <laughs> <laughs> 29 no way. bingo how old, i guess how old he is 
Well, he said he's 33. Oh, and doesn't it suck when someone guesses your age exactly it's so on the annoying. dot? <laughs> How dare you? Nowadays, it sucks. You're 31? Nope. 28. But oh, close. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I only thought because... Close you're, enough, but still offensive. You're the oldest. You say you turned 33. You're, yeah. you're still young. 29? 28, yeah. 28, yeah. Even really younger. Young. <laughs> really young. That's young, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but I do feel like I, I do seeing what's happening right now. It, it, it is amazing. I almost find it more interesting than like seeing asian movies and things mm -hmm. like that seeing because to me it's like these are the spaces that i, I feel like don't get enough credit like it, it didn't even during the youtube golden days of like asian content creators like the first few like i feel like they didn't get the flowers they should have mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. what i'm saying like sure. as as a post now it's like you have one asian actor get a movie and this motherfucker's getting an honorary award yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean for this one movie mm -hmm. when there's content creators that paved the way for like so a whole generation i'd say, of you're asian people. People. I'd say you're part yeah of like that. i might be yeah. a part of it but there's tons of other people too yeah. you know people who are really in that space heavy right and like mm -hmm. I just feel like it's so unfair in a way. What you know what I mean? Because if I think about, right, like growing up, the only Asians I saw in media, it was literally like, you, I watched you and I watched like Tim, Tim. right? Mm -hmm. And MC like, Jin. Oh, well, like, I, I don't know who that is actually. Oh. But like, whoever, <laughs> whoever I was watching, right? And then it's like, yeah, but Tim deserves his flowers. I believe, I agree with you on that. And then it's yeah. like, there's obviously like, who were Asian actors at the time? It was like Jackie Chan, right? Like, who <laughs> who influenced Lu. my pers personality more? Like watching yeah. Tim DeLegato once, twice a week and like watching you or versus watching four movies with Jackie Chan in it. But mm -hmm. like, obviously Jackie Chan's just like A-list celebrity. He's going to get the flowers. Mm -hmm. Same right now. I feel like mm. somebody who's watching us multiple times a week versus watching, uh, who's the guy, Crazy Rich Asians guy, Henry Henry Golding or like Simu yeah. Lu, right? Yeah. It's like they'll make these gigantic blockbuster movies yeah. and they'll get all the credit for like paving the way for Asians. Right. But in reality, mm -hmm. somebody who's watching something every week versus like once a year, like I you're agree. obviously gonna be influenced way more. Yeah. I hundred percent agree. And that's why I think like what you guys do and all those like nine four nine sub mm -hmm. suburb talks, um, and there's so many more, you know what I mean? Like there's like lists of them, and I feel like the conversations they have are very specific, you know what I mean? And they're very nuanced and it's like so important. Things that you it wouldn't be brought up on like Jimmy Kimmel or something. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they might not even, they might think of not even bringing it up because they might think this is too Asian. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that, like when there's conversations like that. Well, I didn't think of it this way, but now I feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, finally at this very moment. Yeah. Yeah. But I now, see I, why I'm doing this. I, I think I recognize pretty young that Asians, especially in Western media, Asians are definitely like the forgotten race. Mm. I think I think that's the best word for it. It's just we're completely forgotten. The invisible. Yeah. The invisible. Yeah, th this, we've been invisible for mad long. Yeah. But I so do feel like that's what I like about y'all. Like when you guys throw your parties and you guys are just unapologetically turnt. Like yeah. Yeah, I we're think, trying to make waves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like more than just being unapologetically Asian. Like one level ahead of that is just being unapologetically confident mm -hmm. in like how you are in all types of spaces. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that goes even further, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're in that, and you're on the stage, and there's a crowd of non-Asian white kids, Latino kids, black kids, and you guys are fucking, you know, turning up like throwing liquor in the air, <laughs> feeding and pouring it into people's mouths or whatever the fuck. Like, that shows a different side, right? And I think that shit is far more impactful. 100%. On another note, an, um, uh, Asians, um, who people who don't get their flowers are Asian porn stars. <laughs> I got to say, at these galas, everyone gets celebrated, but Asian porn stars? It's true. I mean, they've been... They probably got more views than anybody <laughs> of true. any Asian yeah. That's true. in the media. That's so true. Wow. That, I, I mean, I didn't even think about it like that yeah, way. Yeah, What's right. raised more Asian kids than Asian porn stars? <laughs> That's funny. dead ass. That's so funny. I'm just saying, let's if we're gonna give flowers, let's give flowers to everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who's really like That's, been you're there? Right, you're, from right. The jump. you're right. You're right. You're right. Under the influence. Love y'all, man. Love everything you guys are doing. You guys Aww. are the future. You guys are the present. Um. Yeah, let me get some of that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having us always. Appreciate you, you so guys. Wu Tag, yeah. Vitrav, Esther, Jeremy. Under the influence, make sure you guys check out their podcast every week. Constant content. Follow them. There will be no shortage of entertainment. I promise Yay. you that. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of Fun with Dumb. Peace. Bye. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye-bye.